today I'm going to be uh, changing out some interior lights. I've got a 2006 Ford Expedition and uh, the lights that I ordered online are LED lights. I bought these Opti 7s off Amazon. Um, you can buy the lights individually or they come in this big kit for 20 to 25 dollars. So I just bought the 20 to 25 dollar kit because uh, some places you buy these LEDs and they're five or six bucks a pop, and you're going to need uh, five for, I'm sorry, yeah, five for the interior. Uh, there's two basic types. There's these T44 or T42s. These are the ones that are going to go in the back, in the, in the um, back passenger, in the cargo. One thing that's different about these, I didn't have my, um, my legacy in incandescence, but you can see how they're sort of uh, round on the end while the the Legacy Incandescence had some bumps that made them wider. Um, so that's a difference that you have here. If you put these in, they'll just kind of flop and rotate around. So I, I just use some double-sided tape to hold them in place. Uh, the other type are the T105s. And the T105s look like this. they got a plastic shell that just pops in. And they got lights. And you can get them in different colors. I had reds in here. And uh, the reds were a little dark. I'm going to keep red in the cargo area in the back. Um, but they weren't quite as many lumens. Usually when you get the colored LEDs as opposed to white, um, they're not as many lumens. They're not as bright. So uh, I'm going to swap them back out to the white ones. Unfortunately, I don't have my incandescents, the originals, anywhere anymore. Um, couldn't find them. Just to show you the deltas on those, the, the T105s that go in the map lights up front, those just pop in, no problem. Um, the tools that you'll need... To, to do this, uh, basically you need a small screwdriver, um, something that will fit into the, the grooves that you'll see that, that pop the lenses out. Uh, for the back one, I tended to use a little longer screwdriver, um, just because it's that, that one's kind of a pain to bite, you'll see. I also, uh, um, some needle nose pliers help, uh, only because I got, here's a double -side, piece of double-sided tape that I cut. You'll need to cut some double-sided tapes if you want to use these particular kit. I bought the other, a different type of kit and I had the same type of result with the smaller diameter. So let's, first thing you should do is uh, get in your car and if you still have the incandescent factory lights you should shut your doors because these lights will uh, get fairly hot fairly quickly so if you're you know working around the car doing them you know a couple minutes at a time or whatever or five minutes then by the time you get to the back ones, if you left your door open, they'll be uh, very, very hot. So the, the way these map lights, you can see, I've already got some of the LEDs in here. So, um, But there's a pivot hinge up here, and there's a small groove back here, and you just want to work this guy. You don't need to take the whole console off the roof, and then you can eventually see the latch in there. And all you got to do is push it far enough so the latch goes beyond it, and it swings open like that, and then you've got... A, uh, a knob here which is just a that'll be a quarter turn quick turn quick release so it's a quarter counterclockwise and a quarter clockwise to get them in so you need to do is turn it quarter clockwise and take it out and then you've got well the t105 is sitting on the end of it and that just slides out you just pull the two pieces apart and put the other one in I've been told that the LEDs only go in one way um, so if you put it in and you put it back in here and it's the same type of process, put it in and then just a quarter turn, it locks it in. There's a button right here, which is your map light button. And so you want to click that. And if it turns on, you're in great shape. Uh, if it doesn't turn on, I'd recommend swapping, taking the bottle back out and put it in 180 degrees from that. Um, but yeah, make sure you turn that off. Of course, uh, when you try to put this back in, all you do to do is press it, get it beyond the start. And then, yeah, you want to make sure it's turned off. Otherwise, uh, what well, you can do it at the end just to make sure your battery's, uh, you know, you don't want to leave it on overnight if you did this or something like that. So we'll make sure when the car lights go out because it's like putting, leaving your map light on. But, yep, just test it, make sure it works. And that takes care of the map lights. So the rear lights here are a little trickier um, than the map lights up front. You can see when they light up. And uh, there's a pair of those in the back over each passenger seat and there is a quick release it's not a pivot hinge like the ones up where up front and you can stick it and you can pop this lens out 
And you could, it's kind of a tiny space if you just look at my fingers, you could uh, swap it out. But, um, you know, if the, if the bulb just went back in. But over on this side, there's a little release for the entire mechanism. So let me put this on pause and pop it out because I'm not going to be able to do it with one hand. So that's what the hole looks like and it, it locked up right up in here. There's a little groove for it to lock into. And all you need to do is press against it with a screwdriver right in this area right here and then that whole assembly pops out. Um, there's a, a power disconnector here and um, you can disconnect the power and take it, you know, take this whole unit um, away with you. Let me try to get the, uh, let me get the cover off. And again, this is probably going to take two hands, so let me put it on pause. But all you need to do is stick it right in here and just pry. So I've pried that groove up with a screwdriver, and then the lens just pops off. And what you see down in there is uh, you can see where the incandescent, over time, the original stock ones had discolored that uh, that. My color is gold here, or tan flange. I'm not sure what that, why that flange is there. Um, if you want to, if you're handy and you're taking this off and you go to the garage, you could Dremel that out and you'll get a little, little more light out of it. Uh, but believe me, they're plenty bright without it. Because you can see um, there's eight LEDs in there and two of them are kind of hidden. I know there's a reflector that was for the original incandescent. But you can see right down in this area, it's just one leg. Let me get something to point with because I can't get my fingers down in there. So this is your, your power leg over here, and the other side is just plastic. Well, it's a little loose, um, like I said, because you'd have to insert the original incandescent bulb in with the ridges pointing. Um, they were just 180 degrees opposite from each other. The ridges would have to point up against the metal contact for it to make power, and it fills up the space. So I just filled up the space on the back side with a, a piece of... Uh, um, two-sided tape and a difficult one is down in there you can yank this this orange off to a little bit to separate them that'll really help you to get in there to get the second one so that's a kind of a pain in the butt to get the second one down in there um, but you start with that one you can release part of it over here and then stick it in and then just swap it and that's when I use the needle nose to adjust the angle on it once I have the um, once I have the two-sided tape in place. Matter of fact, this two-sided tape, I don't even think is even sticking yet. I just stuck it against the back wall and let it rotate in there. But anyways, you get that, uh, you put the LED in just one side at a time and get it lined up and just uh, fidget around with the uh, needle nose to get an angle you like. Then you want to test it, you know, plug the power back in over here and uh, you can test it. Oh yeah, nice and bright. And then this just goes up. There's this kind of, this, this is your retention on one side. So that slides up and in, and then it should click latch, and it did. And then you can stick, uh, you know, just test it again, make sure that, you know, it's, it's working. And uh, then you just take this guy and work it from this side. I guess I could have put this on before I slid it back up in. check it all right so rinse and repeat on the the other side and that'll take care of the back two lights so and last but not least you'll have to do the the cargo area this one you'll open the real rear tailgate so you'll have the lights on unless you wait a real real long time um, not a big deal there's a lot of access up there all you have to do is um, of course pry it pry it out pry out the old one and basically stick in the new one same deal, two-sided tape. I left my red one in here. You can see the red ones, in addition to being a little dimmer, had less. I only had six versus the eight. Um, so not quite as bright, but that's good for the hatch area. Um, of course, you can turn the, the hatch off, I believe. Yeah, there you go. We get a switch. Now, the tricky, this one requires uh, quite a bit of pulling. And, and, and you see, there's a, I usually come in through the back over here where there's a single pole and then two poles will lock in up there. This guy just, of course, floats around in the headliner, but you, you'll be yanking on it and the headliner will 
start to come down some along with the metal uh, retaining plastic that you got there. The cover basically looks like this. Um, so you got <coughs> three points, one, two, and three. <coughs> I usually attack the back one first. And uh, sometimes the fronts will pop out if you put enough pressure as you go around the outsides. You just want to make sure you separate it from the, <coughs> the gray plastic so you're not pulling on the gray plastic. Um, and let me see if I can get this to pull down far enough. You'll easily uh, get it in there. But usually this pops. This wants to pop outward towards the back, the, the, the first one. And it's the same way with the other two. So, yeah, pretty simple uh, swap back here. And then just to put it back on, you get the two lined up. You do the third one. And I've actually pushed it in pretty good here. You can see nothing but pressure. There you go. Give it a test. Make sure it's working. Good to go. A little loose, but that'll work. And so here's the end result at night. Uh, open the door here. And I, this video doesn't really do great justice. Believe me, it's plenty bright in there. I guess my camera's a little dark. Um, in the back, especially, it really looks dark. Believe me, with the, the LEDs, it's quite bright. So unfortunately, this isn't the greatest video to show you the, the quality of the lights. But uh, yeah, they'll draw much power and. Uh, a little bit brighter than the stock.